We like to think of ourselves as having our own identity. Our true self is within us and doesn't depend on others. The truth is, though, that who we are depends so much on the groups we're a part of and the groups we're not a part of. Once you see someone in context, things can make much more sense. We now understand that this girl is probably part of a school group and about to run in a race of sorts. You see, groups are important because they give us a sense of belonging and an identity in the world that we may not otherwise have had. Teifel suggests that we use groups to form our social identity. Because we're all members of particular groups, and therefore not part of other groups, our minds automatically think in concepts of in-group and out-group. You see this clearly when people support footy teams, the pride and belief that their team is superior to the others, even when they objectively may not be. And this applies not just to sport, of course, but also to social classes, political parties, religions, schools, anywhere you find people in groups. So how does group membership form and indeed play out in real life? One way of understanding it is as having three components, social categorization, social identification, and social comparison. Let's go through these one by one. Social categorization includes sorting similar people and objects. For example, assuming that someone must enjoy cold weather more because they're from Tasmania. We'll see later that this easily leads to issues of prejudice, such as racism or sexism. Social identification involves people modifying their behavior uh, to match the group that they belong to. For example, if I identify as being a Queenslander, then I'll probably support the Maroons and complain about the cold weather. All this affirms that I'm part of this group. And finally, social comparison, in which we compare our in-group with other groups, usually making our group more positive than the rest. Teifeld suggests that this helps us maintain self-esteem, and also explains why group members continue to maintain their difference against other groups, something that can lead to both healthy competition, but also prejudice. One place I commonly see these three processes in play is with year level cohorts at school. If you meet someone for the first time and find out they're in year 11, you might be like, well, that explains a lot. I mean, the year 11s are the goody two shoes grade, or at least in front of the teachers, but you know what they're actually like. As a year 12, well, your cohort may not be perfect, but at least you're more authentic. You work hard and play hard. Yep, that's what you like. This poor year 11, hopefully they grow up in time for next year. If you've had that internal dialogue before, congratulations, your experience aligns with social identity theory and you're a human. Of course, having an identity that's socially formed can also be very problematic, which we'll look at in later videos.